Good morning, YouTube. It is I, uh, Carnage Drains, back again with another video. Um, and this here is an introductory to my new segment. And if you're watching this, it is Sunday, which is now every Sunday I'll be uploading vaping related content on my channel. And it's going to be under the name The First Temple of Vape. That's what we decided to call it because, uh, I don't know, I've been, me and my friends have been bouncing an idea around in our heads, and, uh, I, I don't know. I've been kind of tired of watching vaping videos recently. They just kind of got stagnant for me. I mean, I can only watch a review so many times, and I, I want more than just someone's opinion. I mean, I, I go onto YouTube to be entertained, not necessarily to research things. That's kind of what Google is for, but, yeah, that, that's just my opinion. So, uh... What you guys are going to get is a bunch of silly skits that are also informative, and, uh, you know, me talking about vapes and showing you guys how to build coils, um, showing you guys, you know, what products I personally enjoy, and all the meanwhile kind of keeping a light air about it, um, you know, a lot of comedy, hopefully, hopefully you guys find it funny, um, it will be me and a few other people. Um, this first episode, though, it's just going to be me because, uh, it's, uh, Saturday, it's Saturday today. I'm filming Saturday, uploading Sunday. You guys know how it goes. Um, but, uh, this Saturday, my friends are all playing Ka, and I already promised you guys that I would put this video out, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, next week, though, they will be joining me. Um, so it's going to be me and a few friends role-playing as some characters, um, and eventually, when I get a green screen, green screening stuff in the back and whatnot, you know, silly, silly things will be happening on my channel. Um, but yeah, so, welcome, welcome to the first Temple of Vape. I sincerely got, <laughs> hope you guys enjoy the series, and uh, definitely drop a like if you do. See you guys later. Peace. Greetings, brothers and sisters of the cloud, and welcome to the first temple of vape, where I, Father Carnage, will enlighten you on all things vapey and delicious. In this episode, I will be showing you the ways of the Clapton, the foundation of the builder's road to greatness. Once you master this technique, the sky is the limit, my child. So let us go to our workbench and begin, shall we? First thing, brothers and sisters, we must assemble our tools. We will be using wire cutters and pliers, a drill to spin the wire, cotton, scissors to trim the cotton. We'll need some sort of vise. I use these clamping pliers. You'll need an ohms reader. Always check your builds before you fire them, and make sure you know your ohms law before attempting any of these. You'll need your wire of choice. Um, I prefer Kidney Puncher, but I'm using the rest of this as my core. We're using 28 gauge as the core today, and 36 gauge as the outer wire. You'll need your device of choice. Today I'm using the Relot 2-3. We'll need your rebuildable atomizer of choice. I'm using the Moonshot RDTA. It's a rather small, compact device. I enjoy it and you will need your juice of choice. I'm using Cloud Junkies Flip. Very delicious flavor. Um, it's a pomegranate ice cream. And finally, this is optional, but you may want some sort of paper towel, or I prefer a microfiber cloth to soak up any excess juice that spills. There, now that we have our tools assembled, let's get started, shall we? In this video, my children, we will be building a fuse clapton, thus I will be teaching you a few extra techniques. We will be using the swivel technique, so what I've done is I've linked together three to five swivels. You can go as many as you want. The more You don't just want one, though, or it'll uh, seize up on you. Can't handle the fast rotation of the drill. So you want multiples linked together in case one seizes up, and you won't ruin your wire. You can get these at any sort of fishing shop. And uh, what I have done is I've put a screw into my table. It's a little off screen. I'm sorry about that. 
and uh, yeah, just attach the swivels to that. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take some 28 gauge wire and we're gonna stretch it out along the whole way. And I've already done that here. Just give it a little yank. You want to double this length because we're making a fuse clapton, so we'll need twice as much core. And uh, for a fuse clapton, just the wire like this would do just fine. But for a normal clapton, in the sake of this video, we'll be straightening this piece of wire out. And how we achieve that. So we fasten our wire into the drill just like so. You see this little 90 degree angle? Put it right in the chuck of the drill. Clamp it down nice and tight. Snug, snug. Then you want to take your pliers. Take one end of the wire. The put well, the only other end. Clamp down on it with your prop pliers. Bring the wire semi parallel and spin the drill at full rotation for about three to five seconds. And for 28 gauge, that should be good. Make sure to grab onto it on the side that you have fastened with your pliers before you release tension. Release the tension after you have a firm hold with your fingertips. The wire will spin around ever so slightly in your fingertips. And if you don't hold on to it, it'll uh, spring back and have some waves in it. So now what we want to do, now that we have this beautifully straight piece of wire, so we'll take one end of it and thread it through the swivel. Just like so. Then we'll take our two ends, meet them together, give a nice tug, and a little bit of a pinch. Not too much though, just a tiny bit. And, uh, let's see. Seems I need to readjust some things, so hold on a moment. Alright, I'm back, my children. Sorry about that. Now you just take your two 90 degree bins and fasten them into your chuck like before. Make sure they're nice and tight. There we go. And then give it another tug. All right. There we go. Now, since we're using the swivel technique, we don't need to measure our 36 gauge beforehand. All we need to do now just peel off our tape, unwind a little off the spool, and then what you want to do is take your ceramic tweezers, uh, let's check our rotation really quick, we're going this way, so we'll take our wire under, over and under, We'll lay our spool down just like so, so that it doesn't unwind. And then ever so gently wrap this around your core wires. And then you're pretty much ready to go. When you're using swivels though, you want to make sure that they're level. Level with the chuck of your drill, that is. So there we go nice and level. Alright, now let's begin 
to start it off, go just a little bit light by a little bit. And before that little piece of wire gets in our way further, I'm going to clip it off now. There we go. Alright. So take it forward a little bit. And take it back. That way, it locks down your outer wire so the clapton doesn't slip off. And now, you want to keep your wire, as you can see, pretty even at like a 90 degree angle. Maybe even a little further to the left. Then you just want to start off slow. Kind of look down and check. Make sure that those claptons are touching. Unless you're going for a space clapton. As long as the uh, ratio is the same, it doesn't necessarily matter, my child. As long as it's functional and you get a good, delicious vape. So we'll go at a medium speed, or slow speed, for the first centimeter. And then you can start picking it up. And just pick it up as, as fast as you feel comfortable. And if you always screw up, you can always rewind the drill a little bit and try again. There's no way to really waste the wire, so... Mistakes are okay. They happen all the time. there, now that we are at the end of our wire, we will use the same technique as we did in the beginning to lock it down tight. There we go. Now just grab a firm hold of your wire with your fingertips, snip the end, fasten the wire back however you do. Whether yours has a uh, little slit like this on the side, or have the tape like that one. And there we go. And with these things, honestly, it doesn't really matter how pretty it is. As long as it was consistent the whole time, and works properly, and you get no hot spots, that's all that really matters. Alright, we'll just snip our end right above where we locked it down. And there we go. Let's uh, zoom in for a couple free freeze frames, shall we? Alright my children, now that we have a product that we're happy with, we can continue on to the next step which is taking all these little twists out of our wire. And how we do that is we'll take our two pliers. It doesn't really matter which pliers you use. I, I like these because I can get a nice little grip on there. And uh, you just start at one end. I already pre-straightened most of this, except for the end, so I could show you guys how it's done. So you just grab a little bit right there.
grab where you see the twist and kind of bend back till it's back to being parallel. Then go up the wire and do it again. Just keep on going up like that till all the twists come out. It may take a while, but it is well worth the time. Because wrapping this up, we don't want it twisting on us as we're wrapping around our bit, now do we? And there we go. That should be good enough. Alright. So the next step, since we are doing a dual coil, is cutting this strand in half. And how I'm going to do that is I'm not going to measure anything. I just let the gods decide, my children and balance it on my fingertip. Whoop. The gods are deciding to not let me cut it in half, apparently. Alright, there's our balance point. Grab the ends like that so your outer wire doesn't unravel on you, and lightly clip down. Don't just give it a quick little because uh, you might screw up your wire that way. And see, we came out with two pieces of damn near identical length. All we got is a couple millimeters difference. Alright. So now let's go over to the vise and wrap these around our bit, shall we? Alright, brothers and sisters. So I'm over here while I'll be wrapping the coil. First, because I'm using vise pliers, or... I'm actually not sure what these are called. If you know, please comment. But I'm going to put this little tablecloth down as to not damage my table. We'll take our wire and we'll have the little sealed ends facing up so that way we can grip onto them with our pliers. Double check and make sure my vice is set to the right setting. Alright, there we go. And now make sure that these two wires, the two core wires, are parallel. So make sure this wire is flat. And then clamp down on it. Alright, that's nice and solid. Actually, I need to tighten this up just a tick more. There we go. I'm happy with that. Then what we're going to do is we're going to grab it with our pliers and bend it up to a 90 degree angle. Then today I'll be using a 3mm screwdriver. We also have our build deck here for reference, just in case, so that way we don't have to take any wraps out later on. Alright, so make sure that this is nice and straight to begin with. start wrapping it up. Um, I usually play this by ear, so we'll just count our wraps as we go and see what looks the best. We're shooting for about 0.5 ohms today. I personally don't use calculators, I just go with it, check my resistance, and kind of learn from my experiences. Alright, it seems the wire's trying to twist on us a little bit. So we'll correct that. There we go. Nice and straight. Wrap you on around. Make sure you're straight. Give you a nice firm tug. 
Alright, we're at two wraps so far. Three wraps. Um, I'm thinking we'll go with a five wrap. A five wrap build. That seems like a good number. Make sure your wire isn't twisting on you. Pull it taunt after each cycle, or each turn, whatever you would like to call it. Four. Alright, almost five wraps. And then we'll check to see where we're at on the build deck. See if this coil will work for us, or if we need to add another, or possibly take out a wrap. Alright, so I'll just take my build deck here and line it up. That actually looks pretty good, but I think I can fit one more wrap in. So let's do that then, shall we? Dual coil, six wraps. Sounds like good numbers to me. Alright, and to finish this off, what we'll do is we'll pull a lot of tension. We'll make sure it's straight, because after this we won't be doing that anymore. Make sure not to pull too hard. And just kind of pull the screwdriver towards yourself and then pull the pliers away from yourself and then slowly release it back release your vise and uh... here we go, here's a coil, here's our first coil All right. now what we'll do is we'll neaten it up so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it I'm gonna flip it around Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the other side that was in the vise and give that a little tug as well. Kind of tug it around a little bit. Trying to get these leads at a nice perfect 90 degree angle. Let's see, is that on the camera? No, it's totally not. There we go. 90 degree angles. Then what we'll do is take each lead and put a little 90 degree bend in there. And there you go. First coil is built. Now for the second one, we'll build it the exact same way. There. Now we have two identical coils that are ready to rock and roll. Let's go back over to the workshop, shall we? And now, brothers and sisters, back at our work table, we are ready to do what we have been waiting for. Finally install our beautifully made coils. So first step is first, clip the leads. 
clip that little bit off, clip that little bit off, and I always try to leave a little bit of a longer tail on one of the leads on each coil. It just makes it much easier to install. Got our deck parts right here. And for this particular deck, I might have to do a little bit of prep work, but I uh, actually I don't think so. These might end up being space coils. We'll find out. All right. So first we'll have to grab our hex screw, or whatever screwdriver you used. Mine is Grubs, so I have to use a hex screw. We're gonna open this on up. And on this particular RDTA, I found that if I take a small screwdriver, slide it through this little slot right here, it's much easier to hold and maneuver. Alright, so we'll take our first coil, slide it right on through there, kind of slowly work our way in. Don't want to destroy any of the wraps, so don't go too fast. I'm going to grab my needle nose pliers. Just tug a little bit on each lead. Not hard, just enough to get it moving. Because what we don't want is our outer wraps start coming off. It would ruin the entire coil. Alright, and now that we got it lined up, pretty much where we want. What we're going to do is we're going to grab our leads and bend them up. To secure it in place as we install the second coil. Alright. See that does not appear to be locked down the way I wanted it to be so we'll go back in on that side. Here, let's put our screwdriver in the other way. This RDA is a little bit of a pain to build on. I would like to mention that now, but I still love it either way. Alright, come on, get in there. There we go. Drop that through to keep our shape. Grab on this and really give that a tug. There we go. That should stay pretty much where we want it. Now we'll take our second coil. Oops. And thread it on through the same way. Um, with this RDA, you kind of want to make sure that these other leads from the last coil are out of the way so they don't get tangled. I'll have to open up this other terminal ever so slightly because it's having a hard time fitting in the other one easily. I'm sure I could cram it in there, but that is not what we're about here. Alright. Slowly work that sucker in just like the last one. Looks like we're about where we want it, so we'll give our leads over here a tug. This time, we'll pull these leads off to the side and down. There we go. Now it looks super sloppy right now. It always does on this RDA. If you were working on a velocity, you don't have to do any of this stuff. You just slide it in nice and easy. But I'm fighting with a more complicated deck for, in my opinion, superior flavor. Because I really like my flavor. Alright. 
Now let's just uh, start clamping down these leads. Get it nice and snug on one side, nice and snug on the other side. And then, let's see, I'll need my other screwdriver to get a little bit of uh, grip going on here. And there we go, brothers. Twist. Just slowly tighten them both down evenly. Do, 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 do. And as I said, it looks sloppy now, but there's a lot of room to even things out, clean it up a bunch. Because cleanliness is next to godliness. Or so says the first temple of vape. Alright. So my screwdriver keeps on getting stuck in that one, but alright. Now we'll do a little test. Pull these all out to the side. I don't see coils moving on the other side, so we must be good. Now we're ready to clip our leads. So how I clip my leads this to focus up for us. So I put one of the blades on this coil's lead, bring it up to the lead we want to clip, and just clip down. Nice and easy, no fuss, perfect every time. There we go. And now we'll adjust our coils, neaten them up. Because as is, that will not do. Alright. So what I do on the moonshot is I kind of wiggle it, kind of grab it with my thumbnail, that makes sure they're nice and tight, and bring it up. Just like so. Now we'll do that on the other side. Kind of wiggle it, get them even. Squish it on flat with your thumb. And I really do prefer these types of screwdrivers. They work perfect the way the lip is right there. It catches your wire perfectly. Alright, lift it on up. This one's being a little stubborn. But there we go. That should work. See, much more even now. Not perfect, but much, much better. Alright, so now let's assemble this really quick. And see how it fires. This is the one pain about this RDA, is I have to uh, put it together, take it back apart, put it back together. It's kind of a hassle. But as I said, I do think the flavor is quite superior. Let's just check our clearances. Oh, we did really good. Let's uh, put the top cap on just in case. Oh yeah, no issues, no issues whatsoever. All right. So now we're ready to hook this up to our ohms reader. And I'm using an ohms reader from USA Ohms Readers. I heard that they're the best, and so far they have not steered me wrong. Alright, let's see if we can't zoom on in in here. There we go. Sorry it's so hard to read the LED screen. And, oh my goodness, I guess you guys can't see it at all. But we hit pretty much right where we wanted to be. We are at 0 0.5, 0 0.6 ohms. Hmm. Let's see. 
There might actually be an issue with this RDA. Because it seems to be having some sort of connection issue right now, so... I'm going to go back in here really quick. Make sure that this 510 pin is tightened. Alright, it seems to be nice and tight. Didn't screw up our coils. No, we did not. Put this on like so. Screw it back on. Alright, now let's see if we can't get a more reliable check. As I said, this one's not the easiest to build on. But yeah, it seems about correct. We're at 4, 5 ohms. 5.5 5 ohms. Perfect. Alright. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to grab some extra batteries I have handy. I'm using the pink LGs. They're 30 amp batteries. They're very good batteries. They last a while for 1500 milli hours, but let's see, I did put that in the right way. Yes, I did. Alright, close her on up. Now switch her to fire. Oh, we got a little bit of smoke going on. What I do is I kind of pinch my coils a little bit as I go. See, they're starting to hot spot a little bit in some places, as you can see. So we'll just comb them out with this technique. You just take your uh, utensil. Some people use their screwdriver. I use my ceramic tweezers and just lightly brush the sides. And the little hot spots that you see will slowly disappear. Let's give it another squeeze. Oop. This side needs a little bit of love. All right. Now that we got them uh, kind of fired for their first time, we're gonna take our screwdriver. And we're gonna just lightly tighten up those leads really quick, just to make sure they're nice and snug. don't want any sort of bad connections. Let's go back and check our ohms again. It is telling us 0.3 now. Okay, so firing it. And that, my children, is how you make a fused Clapton. Due to the grooves we've created in our coil, it will now produce a much more dense and flavorful cloud. Mmm, delicious. If you've followed along with this lesson, congratulations, for you have taken your first step in the world of building. Now go forth, my child, and build, vape, and be happy. Amen. Oh. Yeah, you can pick Cherokee for the Omen thing. Oh, <laughs> yeah, because... Greetings, brothers and sisters of the cloud. It is I. <laughs> Damn, this is hard. If you have followed along with this lesson, congratulations, for you have taken. Ah, oops, alright. <laughs> And that was the pilot episode for the first Temple of Vape. I really hope you guys enjoyed it, because if you watch the update video, you'll know it was a pain to put together.
But uh, I still plan on uploading these every Sunday, but for now I'm not making any promises because it was quite a pain. Um, if you guys like the idea of these skit style videos, go ahead and hit that like button so that way, you know, I know you like it. Um, if you want to stay updated, smash that subscribe button so that way you're notified whenever any new content is uploaded onto my channel. Um, once again, I sincerely hope you guys enjoyed and have a wonderful day. Just don't forget, turn the drains.